Olivia, thank you so much for joining us. Thrilled to have you here. Oh, thank you for having me. My first question is, how would you define the Olivia Dunn brand? I would say it's a little bit of everything. It's my lifestyle, it's fashion, it's fitness, friends and fun. You have a huge following, a big fan base. What do you think has led you to stand up? Yeah, I think it's the balancing act of my life. I think it's because I'm a student athlete. I go to class, I go to the gym, and I also do work on top of that. I do social media. How do you do that balance, by the way? Because these are like four careers you just mentioned. <laughs> I mean, from being a student's a full-time job, being a top performing athlete's a full-time job, and you're also an entrepreneur, a marketer. How do you, you know, make it all work? Yeah, I think it really helps being present in each moment because it's really easy to get distracted with all of these things going on in my life. So just compartmentalizing everything really helps. Do you have also, do you have a team? Do you have a strategy? Yes, yeah, it's, it's totally it definitely, like, it takes a village for okay. sure. I have my, my mom, my dad, my sister, my agents, and I think it's really important to have a good team of people behind you that you can trust. How did you get started in this kind of crazy social media game? Yeah, I always loved social media, even when I was a little kid. I love to grow my accounts. I love to see what my audience likes and how they engage with my content. Um, it really started taking off when it was quarantine and I started posting more on TikTok. Uh, I actually started posting on TikTok when it was kind of cringy and it ended up paying off because um, I just knew it was a platform that, that would end up taking off. Was there one TikTok post that kind of made all the difference and maybe sparked kind of this acceleration? I don't think it was one post. I think consistency is key with social media and it was pretty gradual year by year my brand just keep get it just kept growing and getting bigger and i think that's why my engagement is so high right now how much is sports part of your brand i would say it's 50 percent right now it's it's huge i've done gymnastics my whole life and i have one more year of it which hopefully it's my best year yet but uh, yeah, I would say sports is definitely a large component. And how does that work with, you know, you're on, on the LSU g gymnastics team and how does that kind of dynamic work out? Because I've read stories like you're, there's been a fan base coming to the meets yeah. in general that hasn't been always the case. You know what? Bringing new eyes to the sport is very cool. Um, but when I'm in the gym with my teammates, it's strictly business. I put my phone away. I don't usually go on it. And it's usually like normal 20 year old banter in the locker room. We're not talking about money or NIL deals or anything like that. It's just normal 20 year old stuff. And you just mentioned NIL deals. Tell me about that. My life has been changed ever since the NIL rule changed. It's been changed for the better, obviously, but um, it's been a whirlwind. It's been so fun to be able to work with these brands that I never had the opportunity to work with before the rule changed, mm -hmm. and I'm just really grateful. And how are you making money these days? I'm making money through brand deals mostly, um, and hopefully one day I will have my own product, my own thing. That is my goal in the future. I'm not exactly sure what that is yet, but I do feel like I have an entrepreneurial background, so I want to put that to good use. Give me a few ideas. Oh man, something you can do anything. Something You're free market. You can around, anything. Something revolving around the Livy brand, like maybe some sort of merch, maybe some sort of gymnastics product, maybe something. It could be anything. Fashion, fitness, um, an app. I'm not exactly <laughs> sure. And in terms of you know you brand deals right now. What, what are some of your partnerships? Yeah, I've partnered with Viore, American Eagle, and I've partnered with Forever 21, and it's just such an honor because before that NIL rule change, we couldn't work with some of our favorite brands, and ever since I've partnered with them, it's been a dream come true. Well, and how do you kind of, I'm sure you get a ton of offers coming in, how do you decide when a brand is right for you to, to partner with and be representative? Yeah, it definitely needs to feel authentic to me. And I feel like my audience can also detect if something's not authentic. And my core values need to align with the brands. Do you have any examples of offers that came in that were just, you know, kind of dead on arrival and just would not work with what you're trying to build? If it doesn't align with my core values, then it's an immediate no. Um, things that have turned down alcohol, things, and also other things that seem too explicit. Um, I am still in college, I'm a college kid, I'm on a team, and I just want to keep it clean. And also sometimes it's too many deliverables for my busy schedule, and sometimes brands don't realize that. Back to college, I know you said the new NIL rules have changed 
you know, the game for you and other athletes. Um, I also know you have a special fund specifically for female athletes. Yeah. Tell me how that came about and why we need that. Yeah, I mean, I've been blessed with the opportunity to be at the head of NIL, and I just want it to be equal. I want women to be at the forefront of this NIL, and I think it's really important that they have equal opportunities for these deals because there's not a lot of professional league for women's sports after college. So I think it's really important to capitalize on it now. Cool. And how does that fund work? I'm partnering with brands, and they're going to put money into the fund, and Let's say one of my teammates that might never get the opportunity to do a brand deal with, let's say, American Eagle. And American Eagle put money in this fund. Then they'll partner with American Eagle and they'll get a cut of the money from the fund to do maybe a few deliverables for the brand. See, and this is just for your team specifically, your school specifically? I might start with gymnastics and then grow it to the other sports at LSU. And you know, the college sports world is a tight community. Are there other athletes that you speak with all the time and you guys talk business, you give advice, you talk about NIL, you talk about social media? I'm, I'm sure you're a very like you know valuable mentor to people. Being at the forefront of NIL, I feel like I'm not really following in anybody's footsteps, which is kind of a crazy thought, but um, I've been blessed to have an awesome team of people behind me. And if any of my teammates or if any other student athletes ever have any questions about it, they can always shoot me a message. And, you know, Forbes, we do a lot of sports business and we've been lucky to profile and cover amazing athletes and business people, a combination of people who've turned athletics into huge businesses, whether it's Serena Williams or LeBron James or Michael Jordan. Um, do you have any kind of heroes in this world that have taken, you know, athletic excellence and built something gigantic? You know, what? I really... I really appreciate what Nasty Lucan has done with her brand. She had a great transition from winning Olympic gold into now going into fashion and being a savvy businesswoman. You said you kind of got this internet stardom over COVID. Yeah. And then when you went back to school, what was that like? Because you left a normal athlete and then you exploded during COVID when everyone was home. Then you had to go back on campus. What was that transition like and were there any trade-offs? Yeah, I mean... NIL hadn't happened yet, so I was just having fun with it. I mean, I, I still think social media is very fun, but I was just having fun with it, growing my brand, going to school. Because at first it was really funny because when quarantine was happening and I was growing my social media, I was kind of just flipping around at the beach doing my thing. And then I got to school and my audience realized, like, wow, she's an actual gymnast. And they had no clue at first, which is really funny, but... Now there's so many new eyes on the sport of gymnastics, which is so cool. But yeah, when I got to school, it wasn't really, it wasn't really too crazy. I was just living my life like a normal college kid as I do now. So. And you graduate next year? This is your yes. final year, so you're, you're about to be a senior. Yeah. After you graduate, what are you planning on doing? I'm really hoping to venture a little bit outside of social media. Like this past year, I spoke at the ESPY Awards for ESPN, and I thought that was really cool. So maybe some sort of commentating and just keep growing my own personal brand. I've always thought that was really fun, and it is work, but I've always had a blast doing it. You mentioned the NAL before and how you're a pioneer and one of the first people to do this. What advice would you give someone who's about to enter college, they're a star athlete, what should they be doing right now to build a brand and build a business from what you've experienced? I would say first and foremost, have a trustworthy team behind you. Because when you can go back to people that you trust every single day, it helps so much. And also that you are more than just your sport. And I think that's the coolest thing about NIL is that you could do your sport and you could also be a musician. You could do whatever you want and capitalize on that. It doesn't need to just be social media. You can do whatever you have a passion for and capitalize on it now. Very cool. You're branching out beyond the sports world soon. What do you want the Olivia Dunn legacy to be? Yeah, I really want my legacy to be spreading the word that you are more than your sport and you can have it all. You can be a student athlete You can and be a savvy businesswoman that you could do it all and be successful. What's your biggest platform right now in social media wise? My biggest platform right now is TikTok. How many followers do you have? Seven million people. Seven million people. What is your personal secret to building a massive fan base? Definitely consistency. I would say that you have to do it even on the hard days. There's days where I come home from practice and I really maybe don't feel like 
making a certain piece of content, but it's something that I love to do and I know that it'll pay off in the long run. So I would say just grinding through the hard days. And when you do make content daily, how do you pick what you're going to post? Is it how you feel? Is, are you very analytical about it? I've heard all these different theories yeah. from people. How do you choose like what, when, and why you're posting? Definitely if something's trending in the moment, that's what I will pick to post. My sister, she helps with everything. She's awesome and she'll sometimes see a piece of content that she'll think that it would perform well on my page. So she'll send it over to me and she's usually right. She has a good feel for that kind of stuff. Very cool. And you work with a lot of big brands. What advice would you give a brand or company to consider before signing up to work with a specific influencer? Before working with a specific influencer, I would see what kind of demographic follows them to see if it aligns with their own demographic. In terms of fans, how do you balance serving your fan base, but then also serving your growing business and brand? Yeah, I would say definitely compartmentalizing. I mean, if I look at it all at once, it could be overwhelming, but just taking it day by day and cutting out certain parts of my day just to dedicate to you know, making content, to talk to brands, to do my schoolwork, just compartmentalizing. If you could collaborate with one person on a social media post, who would it be and why? Okay, this is kind of crazy, but Joe Burrow. He's awesome, he's an LSU legend, he's the GOAT, um, and I love his mentality in sports. It's really admirable.